Before getting into concrete examples, I'd like to start off by coming up with some kind of description for the kind of work that is expected of a gameplay programmer. Uh, so the most common job descript description in our industry is that it's someone who works on what are called the three C's, that is camera, characters, and controls. Um, now this goes a long way to narrow it down, but I'm, I'm sure all of us who have done this work have found that it's not just limited to these things. So for instance, when I was working on my first game at Double Fine, Every single level was a collaboration between a world builder, so it's like a, an environment artist, basically, and the gameplay programmer. So in other words, there were no level designers. Um, the world builder was responsible for the physical level design, such as the layout, the action path, the camera geometry, the 3D art, um, and uh, the gameplay programmer did all of the level-specific logic, uh, mechanics, any character behaviors and interactions, implemented all the dialogue, hooked up puzzles, made tools that environment artists might have needed, and so on. So in other words, the work that was traditionally the domain of a level designer was split between the gameplay programmer and the world builder. Um, the creative director on Psychonauts, Tim Schaefer, uh, allowed, us, al allowed us a lot of creative control, which meant that like these level strike teams that we had, um, we got to design uh, many of the puzzles, um, player mechanics, you know, character behaviors. So as gameplay programmers, we had to develop a really strong instinct for interaction design um, and the craftsmanship that you, you needed to have um, to polish things to like, you know, really wow the player. There have also been times when I've just done work that is traditionally the domain of system programmers, so like adding features to a cutscene editor, um, adding new sound engine features for our audio team, like writing pipeline tools to create, implementing dialogue, um, creating and pushing builds, and so on. Um, now, around 2005, when we were ramping up staff to work on Brutal Legend, um, this was the job description for gameplay programmers that we posted. So, the gameplay programmer will assist in the creation of compelling entertainment experiences across all levels of the game by programming behaviors for all interactive game elements. Um, so, later on, I think around 2016, when they were hiring for uh, Psychonauts, um, the new description acquired a substantial amount of detail, um, but here it is in a more readable form. Um, so, but the original copy said, contributing to a wide variety of gameplay systems, such as player controls, weapons, and agent programming, as well as integrating assets from audio, art, and uh, effects into those systems. Strong software development skills, a passion for creating player experiences, and an instinctual understanding of design are a must. Candidates should be fluent in C++, have experience with dynamic programming languages like Lua, Python, or C-sharp, have a solid understanding of 3D math, possess good problem-solving skills and debugging skills, um, they're able to develop creative solutions to difficult problems, and possess a passion for adding the extra polish that truly sets games apart. Um, so not every company defines a gameplay programmer like this, uh, of course, but some of the best gameplay programmers we've hired, including those who have spent their careers at other companies, um, are particularly excellent at these things. So I want to share with you some gameplay war stories over my years at Double Fine. Uh, and to help you along, um, here is the engine timeline at Double Fine. So uh, they've shipped games on three engines. The first one was Lipo, which is the Psychonauts engine. Um, it's an in-house engine. Um, written from scratch at Double Fine. Uh, Buddha was written for Brutal Legend uh, starting in 2005 and was used for every 3D game shipped until 2016. Between 2009 and 2016, uh, Double Fine shipped at least one game per year, which is a testament to Buddha's capabilities. Uh, starting in 2011, uh, Double Fine also began using Moai, that's M-O-A-I, um, as our 2D engine. Uh, so Moai, it's an open source engine um, that, was, that Double Fine adapted and then modified extensively in some cases um, based on project needs. Um, so for instance, a substantial modification to Moai became the REDS engine um, that was used for Broken Age and Dear Leader. If you're wondering where these crazy engine names came from, uh, the names are from San Francisco <laughs> Chinatown bars. Uh, so the Psychonauts uh, code name was Lipo because that's the bar where one of the first Psychonauts team meetings took place. Um, and that's actually how the whole tradition got started. Uh, Brutal Legend was codenamed Buddha after a bar across the street from Lipo. And Broken Age was Reds and so on. Um, Double Fine gives a project bar code name so that the teams uh, can come up with a way better suited name later. So like because what happens 
early on, you give a name and then everyone just gets attached to it. So even though you might not have come up with a good one, like that's just what everyone calls it. So we started doing this bar thing because we knew that we would have to like, you know, come up with a decent name at the end. Um, so all of, the, all of these engines core was written in C++, and actually that's the case for all of the engines in the industry. They're all in C++. Um, much of the gameplay in these engines was written in Lua, which is a dynamic, uh, dynamically, oh, sorry, a dynamic scripting language. Um, it's worth noting that DoubleFind has recently retired its engines and has switched over to Unreal 4 uh, for these games. Yeah, 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 yeah.